I don't think there's anybody. Oh, hello. We have started the webinar, and I think people are joining fairly quickly. Exciting. Exciting stuff. So we have a couple minutes before we start, so we'll give it a little bit of time so that everybody can join. But thank you so much for joining us today. This is Sam's first webinar with uh, Nonsensical, which is kind of funny because he is our chief content officer, but we are really excited to have him here. He has so much to share with everyone. So hopefully um, we get some of your questions answered today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we'll give it another minute before we get started, um, but just to do a little bit of housekeeping in the meantime, we are recording the webinar and we'll share a recording afterwards, a direct link to it. Um, we have the Q&A section open for questions, but just to run through the, the structure of this webinar, we'll do a bit of an intro to ourselves. Um, and then Sam has prepared a presentation to walk everyone through. So during that time, feel free to like pop your questions in the Q&A or the chat, um, but we will address it at the end of the webinar, just in case that, just in case Sam mentioned something along those lines throughout his presentation. Right now, I think it's, averaging around like 25 minutes and then we'll around have about 25 minutes I think Should yeah be. perfect so at the end we'll we'll open it up for like more of a discussion with you guys but um we definitely wanted to have something to walk through there's a lot to cover so I think we are officially at 11 so I'll hand it over to Sam to do a bit of an intro Exciting. Uh, well, hi, everybody uh, who's joining. I can see many people just keeping on popping through. But um, yeah, so I'm Sam. I'm one of the founders of Unsensical. Um, I'm Chief Content Officer. So my role here is all about how do you get impact on TikTok specifically, um, but also Meta occasionally as well. So I look after everything related to impact, which could be how do we get a piece of content to work a bit better to drive engagement or to drive followers or to drive more meanable action um, uh, things such as conversion or app downloads or lead forms. So things that make you do something after you've watched a piece of creative. Um, my background is all in direct response advertising. So I used to be a head of digital for a big insurance company in the UK, selling incredibly boring products over Facebook, many, many millions of pounds spent selling life insurance. If you can get that working on Facebook, you can get much more interesting products working on TikTok. Trust me on that one. Um, so very excited to just talk through everything we know about how you get TikTok ads to basically convert, really. There's loads of different things to it. Um, and we've prepared uh, a 20, 25 minute presentation just to go through those things. And I think as Melina touched on earlier, there'll be lots of times for questions afterwards. So if you want to get your questions in whilst I'm speaking, Melina will sort through them. All right, so um, while Sam gets the presentation ready to share, just for the people that have joined, a reminder, this is being recorded and it will be shared with all the attendees and all the people that have registered but weren't able to attend um, afterwards. So potentially today, but most likely tomorrow with a bit of a summary as well. So as Sam said, feel free to pop your questions in while he's running through the presentation, but we will just get that up on the screen now and he will start walking us through it. Um, just a general sense check in the chat, can everybody see what is being presented? Can somebody give us a yes or a no? Hello? You know what? Okay, yep, I'm seeing raised hands, perfect. Great, Let's happy days. Let's do this, go ahead, Sam. All right. OK, so how to create TikTok ads that convert. So we have an appro a creative approach at Nonsensical. We can, I'm really sorry. There is some drilling going on next door to me. So if that's quite loud. I do apologize. But um, we have a paid creative approach we talk about, which is our effectively our nonsensical paid source source. So to get creative, to actually drive impact based on an objective. The three things we always think about creative needs to grab attention within a user's for you page. So you're competing with organic. So how are you gonna grab attention against all of that type of stuff? 
adverts need to be memorable as well. So those that have seen it, think of the brand when it comes to buying. They're not necessarily going to purchase immediately. So it's very much about that memorability piece as well. And ultimately, they've got to be effective. So it causes a user to take an action. So if you always remember these three things, it's a very good starting point for how you do creative on paid, specifically on TikTok. So on the left-hand side, this is our paid source, the 11 factors we talk about when optimizing for attention, memorability, and effectiveness. And I'm gonna walk through each one, hopefully doing this within, within the 25 minute time limit. So to kick things off on TikTok ad creative, the first thing, and probably the most important thing is authenticity. Does it look like a TikTok? right? You are on TikTok, advertising on TikTok, your content needs to look like a TikTok. The age old phrase that TikTok have been using the entire time is make TikToks, not ads. Now, when you're making ads, you've still got to think about that. You've got to make them convert, but you've got to make sure something looks like a TikTok. It might seem obvious, but the amount of brands I see that literally plump on a load of animations that they've made for Facebook and chuck them on TikTok is mind blowing. It just doesn't work. So you've got to make something that looks authentic. It's got to be very, very natural. So it doesn't feel like it's scripted. The branding has got to be subtle in it. That doesn't mean you don't put branding in it. It just means it's got to be a bit more subtle and in the right places. Utilizing TikTok features, things like green screens, effects, all that type of stuff. And the, creative, the creator itself needs to feel authentic to what you're talking about. So we've got an example on the right-hand side here, which is uh, Trey Plant Hire, one of our clients. We do some TikTok ads for, and they basically sell trade equipment. So we got actual tradies to present the content. They feel very authentic to the content itself. So that's one of the first things you need to think about on any advertising you do. Does it look like a TikTok? Is it authentic to TikTok? Might seem obvious, but a lot of brands miss the point on this side when it comes down to it. And then relatability, right? You are trying to connect with people in the immediacy of TikTok and you don't have very much time. And you've got 1.5 seconds effectively to make an impression. And one of the first things you can do is make sure that that TikTok you're creating, that advert is relatable to somebody or someone. It's not gonna be relatable to everybody, but you've gotta find that thing that makes it relatable that you can bring out in the content, ideally in the hook. So a couple of examples here, one of the, this is a football client we have, it starts off with, right, if you're a football fan, so it's great, so if you're a football fan, you're immediately going, all right, okay, I need to watch this video for a few seconds at least to understand what it's about. Or this one here, which is about how much is your car worth, your car owner, or are there any interest in that? You relate to it very immediately. There's loads of different ways of talking about relatability, passion, location, job, family, relationships. What can you find in your product that you're selling that has an element of relatability? And it might not be the obvious thing that you think, but that you can get a hold of that type of stuff very much from talking to your customers and looking at the response you're getting generally uh, broadly. And then production, so there's a few different points I'm going to run through on production, but you're not creating, you're not creating TV ads here. You're really, really not creating TV ads. So always remember that it needs to look lo-fi and like a TikTok, but not really bad at the same time. So there's a few things you can just remember when you're producing TikTok ads that will help make them pop a little bit more and grab that attention you need. So one of the first things is Lighting, if you can film a natural lighting outside or by a window, they look way better than in artificial lighting. If you try and film things in a room with curtains, with crap lighting outside, it looks infinitely worse than bright, big sunny days. Now that can't always happen, particularly if you live in Britain, uh, where the weather's gonna be all over the bloody place, but you can also use artificial lighting to help that bit better things like a ring light or big 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 lights in a room right there are ways of making things look more natural just be a bit careful about where you put light that you're not just getting really bad shadows coming everywhere but yeah lighting one of the first things you can think about in production and then the environment anchoring your thing that you're selling 
to what you are seeing on the screen makes such a big difference for conversion. So does it align with the product? Again, trade plan high, I think is a good example here from what we did. We're selling tradies effectively here to hire stuff. So we've got them to film in front of a skip, immediately anchors it to what you want to do that, which is great for relatability. And an example on the right hand side here, this was a, um, for a service in Liverpool and it was all shot in Liverpool. Again, does it, it feels obvious, but it makes such a big, big difference because it immediately anchors it to an audience who finds it relatable and associates it to something which drives memorability. Things to just remember though, make sure it's distraction free. What you want in the environment shouldn't necessarily take over the video so you can't hear what people are saying. The sound is really, really important. Make sure that if a train, you're not catching like a train going by or a plane going by or cars in the background or kids shouting in the background, just be really, really conscious of that. And I'll talk a little bit more about sound in a bit as well. Uh, the framing as well, very, very important with products that you're selling. If you're selling proper products that you can buy, making sure that really, really just fills the screen. Dominate the screen with the product, but also just remember you've got breakpoints where text is on the bottom and buttons are on the right hand side and you can't go too far up. So the key things you want to show, make sure it's very central to what you have. That's on production. I mean, just make sure it looks good, but not so good. That doesn't look like a TikTok. And then the other part is ad hooks, right? I have mentioned before, 1.5 seconds you have to make an impression on TikTok. TikTok, you are literally scrolling through like this and you are interrupting a user's feed with their lovely organic stuff that they've got, the cats, the dogs they're looking at, which if you've got, that's what my feed looks like, but you're interrupting it and you need to, you've got 1.5 seconds before they're gonna go, nope, and they're gonna move on to the next one. So you've got to have a really, really powerful hook that gets somebody interested for more than a fragment of a second to keep on watching. So what can you do with that? Can you develop some intrigue? Can you put an offer that's super powerful in front of people? Could you use a double hook? Double hook is not used too much, but actually this is like, you know, if you watch this video, if you're a football fan, watch this video, you won't believe what's going to happen if you watch past this part. Like there's other things you can do to just keep that intrigue bouncing along. Now, there are so many different types of hooks out there at the moment. There is not the one size fits all hook. There are tons of places out there. You can ask chat GDP for about a gajillion hooks all over the place. But here's some starters, some examples. We will share this after the fact, so you can just have a look through. I am not gonna go through any of these because it will take me all day, but many, many different things you can do on the hook site. And structure though, very much around building an ad around what is actually gonna get conversion. You, you kind of got three choices. Is it a short ad? Is it a medium ad? Is it a long ad? Now, a short ad can, can convert just as well as a medium ad or a long ad. A lot of this is going to be dictated by the strength of the content itself. But there is no right or wrong answer to it. It's really what you, you can do within the realms of your creativity and what your product sells. So a short ad, as an example, TikTok have a phrase for it called an aha moment, where something happens in it that grabs your attention. It's within five to 10 seconds for this type of length. But what could you present either as a transition or something that is just like a big reveal that really, really helps drive that memorability? It's hard to do that and still sell until explain a complicated process or put a problem in front of people. So it's not always right for every piece of creative or product, but it's a good one to have in the mix. The most popular one at the moment is the medium problem solution. And we are seeing generally big success on this one across most of our clients when it comes down to it. So that is putting a problem up front initially as the hook and then showing your product as the solution to this. So for this bit, the problem is looking for a gift who needs someone to the, who, who someone who loves football, this is a Christmas ad, then mystery football is your answer over here. So you're using the, the, that problem someone might have that they can find relatable and then putting your brand in front of it afterwards. You can do more talking after, the, after this as well. You can explain the process and do all of that type of stuff. 
but you start with a problem and you give your brand as that solution. Um, so you're not starting with, here's my brand and here's why it's great, you're starting with what the consumer has an issue with immediately. And then the journey. Journey is a harder one to get right for conversion. This is a, you know, people don't tend to really want to watch really, really long ads until Hilton came along and blew everybody out the water with a 10 minute ad. But the long journey ad, very much talking around a particular uh, a, a particular issue you might have or talking about how you've used the service. It's really, really good for influencer like content if that's the type of thing people do. It's harder one to get right than some of the others, but it can be very powerful in the mix if you've got the right product to talk around in that. So three options just to think about. There are other things there, but short, aha, medium problem solution and long journey type content. There's some easy structures to get started with on TikTok ads. They all convert just depends on what you're selling. So, and messaging, there's, there's, there's so much in, in messaging that you just need to think about. What is your value proposition that you have? When will you be talking about that within the video itself? You can't start with a product immediately without people just going, this is a giant ad. So what are you showing when to kind of bring people along in that journey? Where will that brand product appear? And what point will you be putting stuff in there that makes people convert? TikTok has got some of the best creative insights ever within their ads manager and within the Creative Insight Center. You can see when people have clicked at what point on a video. I'd encourage you, if you're already doing TikTok ads, to make sure you are checking this because you can see at three seconds when I showed a product, did that generate more clicks? Did that generate more conversion? This is an example from this video on uh, Creative Center. We can see most of the conversions happen after 11 seconds, which is where this big zoom in comes in and there's get it on sale. That's where it is. So that messaging and where you're plotting things, really, really, really important. And your CTA, right? Watch a lot of ads and sometimes you don't really know what you're supposed to have done when you come out of the back of it. Your CTA should be really, really obvious what you want them to do. If you need to get them to go into store to buy something, if you want them to download something, to fill in a form, to buy something on sale, all that type of stuff, make it clear and obvious and try not to do more than one. A lot of companies try and go, you know, buy this in store, but also buy it online. Ideally, you want your ad to get people to come away with one thing there and then, because the more diffuse it is, the more confused people will get away and they won't remember the one thing you want them to do. So summarize it at the end of your creative, make it clear, clear and obvious all the way through. And explain the process if you need to, right? If, if it's a complicated process, particularly around, I find this around apps massively, explaining what somebody needs to do makes a big, big difference. So this is an example from Car Cloud, which uh, is an app. Um, we have two types of creative. One was driving loads of installs because we were telling people to go down and download this brand new app. But the big problem with the app was that you had to then put in your license registration data to be able to access your car's value. So we did another app that just said, download the app, enter your car's registration, and it will tell you how much your car is valued. And that just drove insane conversion post install, which made a huge difference, made our cost per registration something like 80p for an app download campaign, which was amazing. The big, big thing on this one, don't over explain. If you've got a five step journey, don't explain every single step, explain the big key barrier step, because the more you explain, the more you're going to put people off who just go, okay, now that's way too complicated. I'm not going to go down this route. So keep it simple explain the one thing you need them to do, like enter your car's registration or sign up with this form or put in your data, but whatever it is, that one big thing you need them to do, that's a conversion barrier point, get it in. And with brand messaging, what I mean by this is not avoid putting the brand in the, in the product, uh, in the video, the brand and the product needs to be front and center throughout the video to drive memorability. What you want to avoid is branding slogans, like just do it. You've got to always remember back to the ad, you're serving this on TikTok. Would it sound natural if a creator just said, oh, I'm going to buy these Nike shoes, just do it. It wouldn't, it would sound like a major, major ad. So if you're going to say anything, make sure you give people a clear and obvious offer, 
think very literally with your content and read it back when you're scripting if you are or if someone's written something don't put a brand slogan in do mention the brand offers offers drive major conversion you can use them effectively on TikTok. You can use uh, discounts on here. You can use time limited options. You can even just emphasis on. You can even just put an emphasis on um, value as well, rather than necessarily putting in uh, this is going to be five pound versus ten pound last month. You can just bring out how much something is, how much you can get for that price versus something else. You can use display stickers as well. What TikTok's amazing at is using things like effect countdowns that you can add on top. Um, and display cards, which are really big things that pop up after five seconds or however long you wanted to find it for. But use these because they make a huge, huge difference to conversion if you have an offer that you can bring in. Captioning, we always talk about TikTok as a sound on platform versus Facebook and Instagram, which are more traditionally viewed without sound. But how many times have you been on TikTok when you're sitting there watching TV or with your family and you actually don't have the sound off or you have the sound on so low you can't hear what people are thinking? So your captions that you design need to be designed in a way that if someone had no sound whatsoever, they would understand what they have to do after watching the ad. So to do that, you don't necessarily have to sub everything. But instead, you can use labels and captions to emphasize particular points that are being talked about. The main thing you've got to remember is if you watch your ad back with no sound, would you understand what it was? Would you remember what you're supposed to do after watching it? Some general tips, make sure you're using stuff that is native to TikTok, ideally, ideally outline text or labels, stuff that is easy enough to read. If you ever have to squint to read it, that's not going to be very good for people being able to quickly understand it in a fraction of a second. So just make sure it's clear to read and remember, sound off, can you get it? Does it still make sense? Attention triggers are something TikTok talk about a lot internally as well. And this is where you can keep someone's attention through a ad itself, right? I talked earlier about length, an ideal length of TikTok can be almost anything, right? We've seen some of our best conversion points between 17 and 25 seconds. That seems to be where we've seen the best stuff, but so we've had ads that converted at five seconds, ads that are converted at 50, 50 seconds. Key thing is pace rather than necessarily length. So if it does something feel like it's got good pace, are you keeping your attention throughout it? What is capturing your attention and making things memorable? The Hilton 10 minute ad is like the gold standard of keeping attention or attention triggers every few seconds to kind of keep you invested. So you can use attention triggers throughout. You can use something like movement. How is someone coming into screen or moving away? What music or sounds are you using to suddenly jolt people's memories throughout it? Um, transitions, kind of a bit old hat for a lot of people on TikTok. It was very 2020 and 21, but transitions still make a big, a big impact for suddenly capturing your attention if something happens. Don't do it for the sake of it, but if you have a long thing and you've got a transition to a different scene, then try and do something that feels very TikTok. Text as well, bringing in particular pieces of text helps drive attention, like popping up on screen using one word text, that type of stuff. And the brand itself, showing the brand all of a sudden drives attention. It makes people understand things and remember what they're watching. Um, and emojis, even emojis, have an association with memorability and they help attention. So some of the text you're using, could you put an emoji that feels right for that audience? You don't want to use a load of crazy emojis for a product you're pushing towards the over 60s, as an example. So it's got to be, it's got to be right and relatable to them, but it helps drive, it helps drive that attention, what you've got on there as well. So use attention triggers. Think about that when you are putting together a treatment or any sort of ad, are you keeping your attention throughout what you're watching all the way through? And sound. Oh, God, sound on ads, particularly on TikTok, is a bit of a nightmare because the music you get for commercial use is not very good. And once you've seen a few ads on TikTok, you start to hear 
over and over the continual music from every single different ad that is out there. So be very, very careful with what music you're choosing and where you're getting it from. TikTok for business have quite a lot of different options, but they get used over and over and over by different companies. So try and think about how you can use sound a little bit differently at times. Does an ad even need music at times to win? We've got a few we've tested that had no music at all and just relied on the strength of the narrator or the person speaking and they outperformed ones with music. I'd always say test it, see if it works. But if you think about when you hear music in background, quite often you might suddenly go, that's an ad because I've heard that music from elsewhere. So can you make something seem feel supernatural just by the strength of somebody talking and other attention triggers throughout it? If not, can you use something that uh, almost like relegates itself to the background and doesn't dominate what you what you have? Unless you've got crazy big budgets and you can come in and design your own piece of music, which most people don't have. But what else could you use sound for, like sound effects to show some, like to just enhance particular areas on a video? And when you're doing voiceovers, just to make sure it's clear and obvious what people are saying, make sure things are fit, uh, recorded in an area that ideally isn't echoey. That's a big, big problem for a lot of ads that I see, echoey backgrounds. And also that you're using some mics, ideally. You can get really cheap mics for like 20 quid that improve voiceovers a lot. So just focus very much on the thing that people are gonna be hearing consistently, which is normally gonna be the voiceover and bringing that out. At trends, the final piece on this is this is a tricky one to integrate into ads because trending music and sounds can't be used in ads. So how do you bring those trending moments? Now, be that things like the corn trend, as an example. How do you bring some of those into your ads itself? Um, so this could be utilizing popular hashtags, popular um, formats that people are doing, like an unboxing or something like that. Like, think about what you can bring into your stuff that gets it cut through for a short period of time. Trends are all over the place, right? Some are very, very evergreen and they can last for a long time. Others can just be very, very quick and fleeting. So things like the things that just make sense trend are one of the most brilliant things to be able to do because it's pretty evergreen. People recognize it all the time. So think about where you can integrate those a little bit easier, potentially putting your own spin on a trend so you don't have to utilize um, a commercial sound. Is there a sound you can use that could be used for business? There are a few out there and I will link a couple of videos which way show you can find these type of things. So actually sound, find commercial trends basically that are out there. Um, signal trends more about patterns and things like that. So like celebrating multidimensional wellness or smaller luxuries or plastic free content, like that type of stuff. Like how do you bring that into your content to get better cut through and to optimize for that memorability piece? So those are the 11 things. It's a pretty much a big whistle stop tour. There are other things that can help with conversion, but we put these 11 things at the top of our list. So if you then design all of that creative, you, we was always, always ask these questions. If you're a cold user and you saw that content for the first time, would you understand what the product or service is and what you needed to do after watching that video? Would it have made you actually wanted to purchase there and then? Would it have made you think of the brand the next time you're in market for the product? Because not everybody's gonna purchase there and then. Do you remember the brand itself? Do you remember the product itself? Can you repeat it back? And how far would you probably get into the video before swiping up to the next one if it appeared in your feed? You know, did you get bored throughout? That's a really tricky thing to do when you work on the product if it's your product itself because you're so invested in what you're selling, what you're putting out there. You have to look at everything totally cold. Does it, does it make you want to do something after having watched it? If it doesn't, rewrite it try it again make it shorter put different messaging in it make it seem a bit more authentic throughout there just remember you've got to optimize for grabbing people's attention in the middle of a for you page with lots of organic stuff out there and you've got to make sure it's memorable that you come off the back of it and you've remembered what you've seen you've got the key messages out of there and ultimately that's effective and it's got you to go and do something after having watched it and just, a lot, I'll be really quick on this part, just a few things just on types of ad content. There are many, many, many types 
you can use and experiment with. We got a few, I think, are very good just for a starter point when you're creating ads because people can get bogged down in a particular style, but brands can be in almost anything. So traditional one, presented to camera, this is just somebody talking through a product, a proposition, uh, downloading something, anything like that. You are relying on the strength of the creator in this one, and you, they've got to come across super authentic. So use, if you've got creators who look good and can fit, bring your product to life, this is a great one to be using. Mixed B-roll narration. So this is no one speaking on camera in this part, but you are showing a creator doing something and it mixes it up with narration. So this is good if you are a bit, uh, you struggle a bit on camera, on speaking, you struggle to get your words out. Actually, just film yourself doing something, trying out some clothes, putting some jewelry on, that type of stuff, and record your voiceover after the fact. B-roll with narration. This is just literally just utilizing B-roll with narration. No one's in it at all. Great for events. Great for uh, services that might not need a person in, as an example. Green screen, uh, we've seen many of these on TikTok, but this gives you an opportunity to show something that isn't necessarily in your hands. It's really good, we're finding at the moment, a good style for showing reviews of a product in a nat more natural way and kind of going like, oh, I'm gonna try this product now, I've seen this review and then cut into the review itself. You've got to keep this quite pacey. Um, and you can use it to explain processes really well. Like, I'm going to show you how to download this app. It's really, really great. I'm going to show you how to get the, the cheapest car on the market. First thing you've got to do is download this app and you show them to do it. So hyper native to TikTok. Replying to comment, um, you see this format all over organic, but this is basically where you're making a, a fake comment to support what you want to do traditionally in that problem solution format. So how do I date as a single parent? Oh, well, it happens to be there's an app for that type of stuff. So it's very, very good because it feels very, very native. The negative hook, this is starting to be all the rage at the moment. Rather than starting out with a positive, coming out with things like three reasons I'm never going to buy this brand again. Uh, or oh, actually, it's because they're really great and all that type of stuff. There's some great examples out there at the moment, but it's a great one for just capturing people's attention and flipping, flipping conversion on its head a little bit. Before and after, very traditional old school marketing this but if you've got a product that you're using particularly that uh you're using for like skincare or that type of stuff this is a great thing to show oh here's what it was like before here's what i look like now people want to see that type of stuff when they're going to be buying things so it's a great one to potentially use trends i talked about that earlier just how you can bring in those songs dances effects in a way that is commercial free the challenge there is a challenge they have a shorter window than other things, for sure. A podcast format, we're seeing major success with this at the moment. It's a big, big thing on TikTok. You're basically trying to trying to copy Stephen Barber. Like what you are cutting through very, very easily with this type of thing by putting normally a problem at the beginning and natural conversation. They're actually a lot easier to film than most people think. You just need two phones, but you can even have one phone, film someone and then film their response. Um, basically, it's very, very conversational, really good for engagement, a little bit harder to drive conversion, but you can do it in the right way if you weave your product in in a natural way around that. Got to make sure that hook's strong there. Fake stitches, um, seen loads of these at the moment. TikTok, if, if, you, if you're a frequent user of TikTok shop, I think the, one of the biggest brands on there is this toilet, shaper brand, uh, toilet paper brand. They did a really good one where they took somebody else's content who was selling off of them on TikTok shop and then showed this, uh, showed them being like, oh, actually it's because of our toilet paper. So what could you do in this to create a stitch from somebody else that does something a bit more inane? You could create that yourself. Like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm using this product, it's insane. Oh, wow, look at this product here. This is where you can buy it from. So it's about showing that shock factor on this one. And the fake duet. I love this example from High Smile. They're basically just this lady's duetting a review from somebody else of, of a great review that they've got and talking through it. So, yeah, it feels very naturally TikTok and tricks people a little bit, but it's really good for showing those extra things like a good review or something like that. And finally, Sketch. Sketch is really, 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 really hard to get to work for conversion, but they can. I would always recommend, generally, if you're going to do a sketch, use an influencer who does that type of content already, and they can weave in their products a lot better that way. The, the old Love Island team, Chris from Love Island and Sam Thompson and all those people, they're really, really good at doing this. They did a great one recently with Dettel. They managed to weave in this in a funny, funny sketch. So it's hard to get these to convert, they're great for engagement. You've just got to think about 
do people remember the product or do they remember the sketch? So how can you weave that stuff in all the way through there? It's one to have in the mix rather than building a whole, whole set of content around. And that's loads of different pieces of content that you can do out there. There are tons more. That's not the that's not an exhaustive list, um, but a start point really if you're just getting ready on TikTok ads. Amazing! Thanks so much, Sam. I think that was really comprehensive. Lots of inspiration there. I hope after this, people take some of these ideas away and actually try them for themselves. Um, we've had some questions come through in the chat and in Q&A. So just a reminder, if you have any questions, start popping them through now because this is the Q&A section officially. Um, so starting off strong from Kaz. Thanks for joining Kaz, nice to see you again. Um, I'd like to know how these things apply when ads aren't intended to generate sales, but more to raise awareness of a service or give advice. Um, and there was another similar question as well from Hermione who asked about um, if we're focusing on solely building a community instead of sales. So how would any of your recommendations differ? What would you recommend? Yeah, it's a really good question. I mean, we, we, have, a, we have a source for organic that looks slightly different to, to this as well. I think ultimately it depends on your goals, if they're more short-term, long-term, if you're community building. Um, a lot of what I've talked around there if you're, I think the key thing for me is, are you putting paid behind that when it comes down to it? So if you're still putting paid behind these campaigns to generate reach and awareness around the service, everything still applies there. You've just got to remember, are, am I going to remember the brand or the service off the back of it when it comes down to it? The principles of TikTok remain the same. Your stuff has to be authentic to the platform. You've got to remember the hook that you're putting in. So to be able to cut through that type of thing. And you've got to be relatable to the audience that you're showing, uh, to, that you're serving it to. Otherwise, people just are going to scroll by. They're going to just go on to the next thing. Um, so essentially, the principles remain the same. The bigger question for me is, are you going to be looking at this for like long-term organic success rather than just paid success, I think? Awesome. There's a follow-up question to this from Samaya. Um, if you're a startup, ed tech how would you work on building a community and sales because i feel like with startups in general they need that awareness but also they need the conversion to survive and make it onto the next step of being a startup um so how would you recommend somebody at that stage go about it what uh, doing community building and paid at the same time yeah yeah i think they could they they actually work a lot better hand in hand than just doing one or the other um if budgets allow um your organic stuff should be where you are not just trying to flog your product right the paid aspect is where you can be a bit more harder hitting and talk about your brand and effectively offer less value than you have to on organic on organic when you're building a community it needs to be a much more topical conversational not just hey buy my product it's what can I offer to this community to actually build something out at the same time? So you might decide, hey, I sell, uh, let's say I sell um, hair products. I'm going to talk about particular hairstyles that are out there at the moment. That might not necessarily sell the product I have, but provide some value for um, the, type of the, the type of consumer that I have. Whereas my ads are going to do something which are, here's why you need to buy my product and here's the great offer that I can give to you. When it comes down to it so it's just about thinking about those principles a little bit differently um i think you've always just got to make that distinction that paid is shorter term than organic organic is a long-term build you shouldn't be thinking about i'm going to start on tiktok tomorrow and get a massive community in the next month month it's about building a community over six months six months a year two years getting that out of the long long term and not worrying so much about the sales that come off the back of it Completely agree. Um, I think they kind of serve different purposes, but can work hand in hand, just like you said. Uh, Kaz had a follow up question to her original one. So a paid campaign for driving awareness, reach, community building, etc. She said it makes sense because you want to make TikToks, not ads. It applies to TikToks in general. But is there anything specific to paid ads that you would recommend doing differently to organic content with those objectives? For context, we've never done paid activity on TikTok and just curious if we need to approach it differently or put boost slash ad budget behind existing content. 
Um, I think, again, it's goals, right? What, what is the goal of the organic content you're doing? If you want them to remember the brand, if you want them to fill in a form, then your paid ads that you're creating need to be a bit harder hitting. They need to be more to the point and focused on your product and something else. Organic shouldn't just be about the service you are, you are flogging. It has to be about something more beyond that. If you're just talking about your own product the entire time, your organic is going to get pretty stale quite quickly. So organic should have broader topics. You should be talking about other things other than just your product, but your page should just be focused on one thing, pushing that service ultimately. Yeah. And I would also just add, because if I remember correctly, Kaz, you are working at a university. So with that in mind, if you are doing a paid ad for awareness, instead of having like regular student life content that you might post on your organic account, just make sure that the brand is involved in everything that you put boost behind, because that's what you want to eventually uh, raise. So you want to raise awareness. So everything that you put boost behind should have clear University of Liverpool behind it university like it doesn't have to be specifically said but it needs to be placed methodically throughout so i think that was one of the other things that sam mentioned in the sauce so just keep that in mind when you are um when you're going through that so hopefully that helps we have quite a few other questions so on the next one we have uh can you recommend the best place to find advice slash learning on how to use tiktok's creative function so, for example, how to actually create TikToks. Oh, the TikTok Academy exists um, from TikTok themselves, and it basically explains everything that you need when it comes down to it. They have the, I think they have the Creative Academy. They have an Ads Academy as well now. They have a Creative Marketplace Academy. So, go to the horse's mouth, so to speak, from TikTok. They've they've got lots of stuff out there. We provide lots of resources as well. Um, we do various webinars, we do various guides, and also on our own LinkedIn's, we talk about this a lot, but I would look directly at what TikTok are putting out there on their academy. Um, on their Creative Insights Center as well, they've got a, like a top ads dashboard where you can see ads across every single different vertical in every different country based on every different objective and how things are working live. It's crazy if they give you this stuff for free. Like it's it's wild. So have a look at what TikTok already have out there. Absolutely. Um, we, even as a TikTok agency, we take these courses. So can absolutely yeah. uh, attest to their usefulness. We definitely recommend checking out what they have for free out there. Uh, next question is, do you think it's more effective to put spend behind paid ads from a brand on TikTok? or spend on influencers to create ad videos instead? Depends on your budgets. Um, influencer content can work really, really, really well. Really, really well. Um, if you are a new brand that nobody's got any clue about, of, I'd really recommend working with some influencers who are authentic in your niche, you can bring that to life. If they can create the type of content that converts well for you, if it's about driving CPA goals or about driving forms, then put more money behind that type of stuff. We've done a few campaigns with brands where actually the influencer content with Spark ads drove better conversion than our normal ads because the audience of those influencers were hyper ready to buy when it came down to it. So they're a very good thing for driving things, particularly if you're a new brand and nobody's heard of you from Adam, like giving a bit more kind of brand benefit to that type of stuff. But yeah, it does depend. I recommend testing it. Create a marketplace is a great place for looking and just putting some open briefs out and finding particular creators in your niche. You can get started at a relatively small cost to test the waters. Definitely. Um, and also with the use of Spark ads, uh, it makes it a little bit more measurable as well. So I know one of the fears with influencers, it's that you just get them to post and you hope for the best almost. You might give them a link that you can track, but you never really know the actual impact. And Spark ads is a bit of an answer to that. Um, it's still not completely accurate, but it gets you one step closer for sure. Yeah. Another question. So if capacity of the team doesn't allow you to film on location regularly, what would you recommend? They work in a housing and they work in housing and often our developments are miles and miles away. So what would you recommend? Green screens. 
all day long. Um, I showed that format earlier where you could just basically put a picture of something, uh, particularly in housing, right, where you can show different houses and stuff like that. And you could just have someone talking, uh, talking about a, a, the housing development that you've got. We actually worked with a property company and this was the style we did. We were like, oh my God, have you heard about this brand new property development? So that's a really simple way of doing things. Um, there are other things you can do where you might just be filming presenter led and having pictures pop up at the same time. But those are some simple ways you could uh, could do it. Yeah, and really native to TikTok as well. So one of the other things is where possible, try to edit within the app or using CapCut, which is pretty native to the app as well. I know it's a little bit different for ads because if you're not doing a, an organic post first, you're going to need to upload it somehow. But using those native features is going to make it even more impactful. Um, we have a question from Alicia. So can you go straight into creating paid TikToks if your account is new without the organic, or would you always post organically first and then upload paid for TikToks? I was, that's a really good question. I think um, you can do both, both approaches. We've worked with clients who've got absolutely no organic presence um, and they've done well. And we work with some clients who do a lot on organic and also do a lot on paid and both does really well but ultimately budgets are the big thing i'd always remember if you've got finite budgets where are you going to be spending things and your time and your resource you can't really do both at the same time middling like if you're doing everything with like half assed effectively none of it's going to work so if you've got the right time to invest into organic do that alongside your paid or if you've only got enough time to spend on one thing go hardcore into your paid if if that's what the goal is you want to drive sales and that type of stuff when it comes down to it and just remember that media spend that you've got against it if you've got a, a 5k budget and you've got a factor in media and you've got a factor in content creation and loads of organic videos to go over the top of it what are you going to get at the end of the month when it comes down to it you know if you if budgets and time allow do do organic and do paid at the same time but if you haven't got enough budget focus on one thing Agreed. Um, I think that last question before this one sparked a lot of influencer based questions. So um, would you if you work with influencers to create content, would you also repost it to your own TikTok channel? Oh, I actually wouldn't. Generally, generally, I wouldn't not on TikTok. I would probably repost it onto Instagram or Facebook, depending on what I was doing, depending on the account itself. But I think keeping it very authentic and native to the influencer itself and not publishing it on your channel is has a better way of doing it. If you're doing it for a reason of actually generating content for your brand um, is one way of doing it. But ultimately it's already been posted by somebody else. So their audience who's hyper relevant in that are gonna have already seen it. If you're then publishing it as well, it's probably not gonna do very well. So it's just going to be sitting on your profile. So I would probably not publish it on your own profile. On TikTok, on Instagram, Facebook, publish it there. Definitely. Um, it just seems like you copied and pasted on TikTok and it comes across really clearly, especially when they can click and see it on their page. So uh, just let them do the work on TikTok and then you can repurpose it elsewhere, depending on the contract, of course. Um, there's a couple of questions about creator marketplace and how to actually source influencers or creators. Um, do you mind just walking through the general process of that to help people out? Yeah, so creator marketplace, anyone can sign up for this, but this is, uh, I think there's many, many millions of TikTok creators have signed up for it. You can go onto there and search for creators around niche uh, based on how many followers they've got, what their typical engagement is, what their location is. Um, you can search things like, um, you know, creators who talk about plants in Bristol or something like that and they will maybe find someone who's got that in their profile um, but basically as a brand you can go on there and you can put a brief basically that is an influencer brief so I want to get five creators to work with me activating this product now that could be an app that could be a product that you send through to them um, you can invite influencers to your campaign if you like Every single creator has a budget. Well, it should have a budget. A lot of them just say open for negotiation. Some of them have like from 50 quid a video, 500 quid, 5,000 pounds. So you've got to make some choices just about how much you're willing to spend. 
just being quite careful that it can be a bit wild west with creators sometimes so you've just got to find those right ones that, that fit the brand and then once basically through that process they send the scripts that you upload that you approve within creator marketplace you send out the products they have to put the video up into creator marketplace where you approve and then it goes live on their profile so you end up with full control over the whole process you can't get swindled no one can public you don't send any money until the whole thing's done and it's a really good generally risk-free way to work with creators and test the water and i say you can also do open briefs you can basically just put something up and say i've got a five quid budget who wants to work with me and creators can apply as well yeah it just makes it a lot more streamlined you can go directly to them and they can come directly to you lots of transparency there as well in terms of rates so it does help out but you are limited to the people that have signed up for creative marketplace so yeah. if there are some people that you've seen just on your for you page that you want to engage with and they're not on there you would still have to reach out organically um which can add a bit more steps but sometimes it's worth it as well a uh, quick yeah. question about oh sorry did you have a follow-up i'm just going to add that you, i didn't really mention this earlier you can take those influencer pieces and plug those into your ads manager and that makes them so much more powerful because organic influencer pieces will do okay, but if you can then promote that to your audience specifically that you need it to hit to, then it, it just does amazing. And that's where everything gets fully tracked at that point as well. Yeah, and that actually leads perfectly into the next question. So somebody asked about Spark ads, what they are and how you can use them. Yeah, so I mean, that's a, a, a normal, typical ad is just what you would see. I would call it like an in feed TikTok ad. That's just a dark ad, doesn't sit anywhere on anybody's organic profile. A Spark ad effectively is organic somewhere. Now, that could be on an influencer's page, that could be on your own brand's page, but you are then turning that into an ad itself. So like a boost, but not quite, because you're plugging it into an ads manager, which means you can then really get uh, hyper-targeted with everything. And you can also add on uh, display effects as well. So you can, add, well, you can add on a link to it for starters. You can add on like a countdown timer. You can add on display cards, various, various things that basically turn your an organic post from yourself or an influencer into an ad. Yeah, so this is what I was mentioning earlier, where if you use an influencer and previously you might not be able to track the impact that it usually has. Like if you think of the old influencer days on Instagram where they just post a picture of your product and you hope for the best. Um, but this allows you to actually turn it into a trackable, measurable ad that kind of automatically validates the value of using that influencer or your own organic content. Um, next question is about business to business. So how, do you have any tips for B2B ads on TikTok? I feel like that's kind of a tricky one, but really relevant. Yeah, I think if, that, that's very, very hard. A lot of the um, lot of the audience targeting on TikTok isn't as powerful as, say, LinkedIn or Facebook for finding B2B people. Um, but just be really specific and as relatable as possible for what you're trying to do. Like you, you're trying to tap into business owners or people in business so it's quite hard to find them really and what they're going to do so start off with that hook about what you're going to be selling so an example we work in social media and ad creative uh, attribution is a big thing for us so if i see an ad which is like are you struggling to attribute your ads for me that's the first thing i'm gonna i'm gonna take notice of so find that thing that exists for relatability and turn it into that hook because you can't target very well in the B2B space. What you can do over a period of time, TikTok's audience tools start learning off of TikTok success. So the longer you advertise, the more powerful it will get, but that's long-term rather than the creative itself. Yeah, definitely. And I would just say, remember, it's like a, it's a person-to-person -person platform. So it's not brand speaking to brand. It's not Ryanair speaking to some cargo brand. You know, it's, the person behind Ryan Air speaking to the person behind the cargo brand. So find the pain points that you think that your audience within the business is going to relate with the most and make your content around that. And I think we're working currently with a B2B um, company, and that is one of the main things that we're trying to pull out, the pain points of the people within the business that we're trying to make the lives easier for. So just really, really hone in on that. Um, so there's a couple of questions about branding. 
uh, and I think I could kind of put them into a two part question to address multiple. So how would you approach ad creative for a brand that wants to be portrayed as premium or top of range while also meeting the lo-fi native elements as well? This is part two. Um, how to deal with the balance of wanting to create uh, pretty off the wall stuff versus maintaining the brand's image. I feel like they kind of go hand in hand and it's a question that we have to answer quite a bit. So take us through it, yeah. Sam. Uh, yeah, good questions, good questions. Um, the luxury premium one, I think is consistently a hard thing to do and nail really. Um, I, sometimes you can do that with creators. We just did a big campaign with a relatively premium brand. And the way we got over the premium aspect was the creator in there themselves. So it still looked lo-fi, but the person in it was very, very stylish. And the way they talked was a bit more premium and something that would be considered a bit more um, less premium, I guess. I don't know how else to say that. Um, so think about those creators that can portray it in a way. Think about those shots. Even though I talk about lo-fi, the production is, is important, like good, good lighting, filling the frame of what you're showing. Like you can still make something that's quite premium look good on TikTok. There's um, Dick Love It, which is a car rental brand, a car buying brand in Dan and Swindon. Have a look at them on TikTok. They literally, they sell Ferraris, basically. That could not be more premium than that. And their TikTok's incredible. They get loads and loads of views just by showing the incredible premium stuff just going across the screen half the time and integrating some trends and stuff. So it's all filmed on the phone. It's not that like cars quite often are still thought of in like these high production ads actually just filming on a mobile of something incredibly premium works really, really well on TikTok. Um, and then the second part to that second question, which is hugely, hugely challenging all the time. I think I've always found it's a, little, it's a step by step approach, right? For bringing people on board, for going a little bit more off the wall with your ideas. Brand is incredibly important to the brand team and on TikTok quite often talking about your brand has a negative effect really so if you're if you're doing it from an ad perspective you know you can integrate that ad in a more seamless way but if you're trying to get them to think a bit more out there with it what's the one thing you can do on there to just bring them along on that journey like what's the slightly 10 percent more hardcore idea that you could bring there and just test the waters on performance makes such a big difference to the brand team like if you can turn around and just go like actually we did it like this and it worked way better that's always going to help tell that story in the long term the numbers don't lie quite often and that's really really tricky when you start playing with that type of content and it doesn't work because you can't tell that story as well um yeah i think testing is the other thing if you could just get them to agree why don't we just do this version and this version and a b test it and see what's working well as long as as long as it's like within the realms of their brand options, really. Yes, absolutely. Um, we have another question about how TikTok ads can address each part of the funnel. So awareness, traffic, conversion. How would you approach each part differently? Are there best practices for each goal? Yeah, I, I mean, the, everything I talked around earlier was very much geared around how you get things to convert, like memorability, driving effectiveness there and then. Like with other aspects of driving awareness, you, quite often the way the, the way you approach creative can be quite similar. It's you know, are you optimizing more for shareability at that point? So are you taking out some of your product from there? You're taking out some of the download this, do that. You're leaving it a bit more open ended with what you do. So your ads or creative shouldn't be about buy this right now. It should be about, have you heard about this? That's, that's great. Or have you, did you know about this problem? It doesn't necessarily have to be buy this thing right now and take that, take that thing. And then right back into it is, is, is how you're optimizing online on, on the platform. So conversion and app downloads, that campaign setting in your ads manager will optimize that type of stuff. If you optimize towards reach and awareness, you will generate a lot more reach and awareness. They're going to be less likely to purchase something immediately than conversion ads, but they will be much likely to have heard of it when it comes down there. And then bringing people down the funnel, it's what you're doing to then explain a bit more about the process and not necessarily selling. Um, I think it's just about your goals though, right? Like 
If you want to drive sales, conversion ads, conversion ads all the way, like awareness and consideration. They help do a long-term story around type of stuff, but they won't work as well as strictly conversion to drive your sales. But it just depends on your goals, right? It's always down to the goals. I think that's the, the first question that we always ask. What is a win on TikTok? Whether it's through paid, whether it's through organic, what are you trying to achieve? And then we shape everything to address that. So I think a lot of times people come in with what they think they, they want, um, and then they find out later on when they're not getting what they actually want that that first goal was actually false. So really ask yourself the seven whys until you get to that um, actual answer that's going to either make TikTok a viable platform for you to continue or move on to the next. Um, hopefully you never move on because TikTok is a wonderful space. We have about two minutes left and I'm aware that there are some questions that we weren't able to get to. So what I will do is in my emails back, I have a record of all of the questions, the ones that we couldn't answer, I will try to answer directly. Um, and then just, for the last two minutes, Sam, I guess I know you gave a whole presentation on how to approach TikTok ads, but is there any, based on the questions that we've gone through, is there any like three points of important information that you want people to consider when creating a new ad campaign on TikTok from scratch? Like what should they consider? What should they remember from this, if nothing else? Oh, memorability from my from my presentation, right? Um, so it, it, do your ads look authentic to the platform? Do they look like TikToks? Are they relatable to someone who's going to see them? Like those hooks themselves like that. Is that something that's going to, somebody who needs to see them, they're going to immediately be like grabbed by them. It's going to grab their attention. And then what you're showing in the ad, the messages that you're showing, are they clear and obvious? Do they grab attention throughout? And do they, at the end of that, do, they, do you realize what you have to do after watching it? Watch it cold. Watch everything you create back cold. Take yourself out of it. Remember, forget everything you know about the brand. Watch it like you're a brand new consumer. Show it to somebody. Show it to your partner. Show it to your mom. Show it to your gran. And just go like, what do you think about this ad? Like, what, what does this tell you about this when you've got it, when it comes down to it? Um, forget so much about how long something should be. Like, there is no ideal length that sits out there. Like, but ultimately, ask yourself, should it be that long? Should it be a bit longer? Like, did it drive my attention throughout there? You can say everything you need to about a product or a service in about 20 to 30 seconds. So if you're going above that, why? Did you drive attention throughout it? Like, just remember those points. If you feel bored watching an ad, be very, very clear that everybody would have dropped off by that point. Amazing. We are right on the dot. So thank you so much, Sam. And thank you everyone for joining and for your questions. I'm really sorry we weren't able to get to all of them. Um, I've popped my email in the chat. So if anybody has any other questions that they weren't able to ask, please feel free to just email me directly. As I mentioned, I'll be sending a email follow up once this recording is ready to go. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to answer some of the questions in that email as well. So Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, looking forward to the next one. Please keep an eye out. I'll be sending another invite soon. And also, if you have any recommendations for other webinars, email them to me. We'll make it happen. Thank you so much. And we're going to end it there. I hope you all have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Bye.